Great, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at a value stream map, again, for our diamond dollars coffee shop. And I'm going to present this value stream map in a little bit different way than I did the last one. The process is still the same, but we're going to do the order a little different. You can do this value stream map for as many processes in the organization as you need. Okay? Think of it like this. You can actually take the process piece of the side pop map and just unpack it, because that's what you're doing with this value stream map. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at that whole coffee making thing again. Okay? All we're going to do is draw the steps in the process first. Okay? That's all we're going to do. So, we got step one, step two, step three, Step four. That's all I've done is I've drawn out the steps. Okay? Let's identify some steps in making coffee. Okay? Maybe the first step is roasting the beans. Okay? All I've done is I've written roasting the beans right up here. That's all I've done. Now we're going to do grinding the beans. And in order to show that transition of grinding the beans, we're going to take this other marker and we're just going to make an arrow. And all I'm saying is we've taken the beans that we've roasted and we're moving it over the next step. That's all that arrow means. Okay, now we're going to grind the beans. Okay. Once again, we're going to take my purple marker because after we grind the beans, we're going to brew that coffee. Okay? And what do we do after we brew the coffee? We give it to customer. All, I'm just, once again, brew coffee. All it does is make an arrow. So we're going to do it on the next process box here. Okay? Okay? That's all we've done. Give to customer. I've just labeled that box. Done nothing else. Okay? Now, what we're going to do after that is we're going to indicate a process metrics right below each step. So the first one is P over T. All P over T means is how long does it take you to do one iteration of whatever you're talking about. Okay? So let's put PT beneath roast beans. PT beneath grind beans, PT beneath brew coffee, PT beneath give to customer. Okay? So, let me ask you, how long does it take for you to roast one batch of beans? Okay? Let's say that it happens to take actually two hours to roast a batch of beans. Therefore, my PT is two hours. That's all I've done. Okay? Let's say to grind the beans, it only takes 15 minutes. Okay? It takes me 15 minutes to grind the beans. My process time is 15 minutes. And to brew the coffee, let's say it takes five minutes. Okay? And remember, you can make this as elaborate as you want for brewing coffee. Like The brewing coffee could be like when you stick the espresso thing in the whatever that thing is where they spray hot water over the beans and then you pour the milk and you mix it all together. That whole thing could be brew coffee. Br brewing coffee. I'm just trying to make this simple for purposes of illustration. Right? You can make this as complicated as you want. Give to customer. Give to customer. Let's say that also takes five minutes. Okay? That's all I've done. Okay? Now we're going to do volume right at next, but we're going to leave that blank for a moment. Okay? Okay. Okay. Just going to leave that blank for now. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to write in the error rate. I'm going to write that in for each one. Why 
why is error rate important? Error rate lets you know that when you, how often you make mistakes in a process. And again, that's important. In fact, that's extremely important. Because when you make mistakes in a process, you normally have to redo that entire process. So you're better off doing it right the first time. In fact, mistakes usually cost more than if you just fix the error. Because you think about it, especially with a cup of coffee, right? Let's say you make that cup of coffee incorrectly. Great, congratulations. You have wasted those roasted beans. You have wasted the time grinding the beans. You've wasted the time brewing the coffee. The customer is upset, and you're going to have to redo this whole thing. So if you can catch those errors, that's important. So let's say the roasting beans. Let's say, I think I said 95% right, of the time we got that right last time. So let's say that our roasting error rate is 5%. Okay? Now grinding beans, that's a machine. You grind it. We don't really make mistakes there. Okay? So let's give that a zero. And the error rate, maybe let's say that we got a bunch of new baristas because we just opened, and that error rate is going to be about 25%. Okay? Or maybe our machines are bad. Who knows? But the error rate is 25%. And then giving to the customer, maybe you give the wrong order to the wrong customer, and you do that about 5% of the time. Okay? All I've done is write in the error rates. Now we're going to get to the little castle things. Okay? So, okay, line down, line up, line down, line up, line down, line up, and line down. Okay, great. I like to keep the math simple. There are different ways you can do this, but I like to keep it simple. Okay? Some people might take the roasting beans and say, how long does it take to, like if you roast a whole batch of beans, they'll do some fancy math to say exactly how much time is spent roasting for each, um, the, each amount, little amount of beans that go into each coffee. So let's say every time you put the beans in the roaster, that's enough beans for 100 cups of coffee. They might say, well, you know, we're going to divide whatever, let's say, again, this, in this case, this is two hours, right? So that's 120 minutes. And let's say every time I roast beans for two hours at 120 minutes, and that's enough for 100 cups of coffee, they'll say, well, actually, it only takes one point, um, I'm sorry, one and a third minutes, 120 divided by 100. Um, one minute and a third, or just over a minute, to roast enough beans for one cup of coffee. I mean, technically that's true, but if it takes two hours to roast the beans, it doesn't really matter how long it takes to roast beans for an individual cup because the beans are not roasted for an individual cup. They're roasted as that batch. Some people like to get fancy with the math like that. I find it totally useless, but you can do it if you want, if that helps tell your story better. Let's keep the math simple. So, I like to do everything in terms of how much of this work can get done in one hour. Okay? To me, I like to keep the math simple. So, if I have down here, let me get over here, I'm going to write one hour of value added time, and I see my volume is just going to be a half. Okay? Because in one hour, I've only roasted or done half of the work for roasting those beans. Okay? I cannot complete a full iteration in an hour. Grinding beans. It takes me 15 minutes to grind beans. Okay? So in one hour, I'm going to grind four batches of beans. Again, you could say that the bean grinder can grind enough coffee for you know, 15 cups, and therefore it's about a minute, you know, for, but again, I find that not very helpful, okay? Brewing the coffee, okay? In one hour, I can brew 12 cups, okay? Once again, one hour for the customer, in one hour, I can brew enough or in one hour, I can, find, I can get 12 customers their coffee. Okay. Now, let's say there's some waiting time. That's what we're going to put on these things up top. 
let's say those beans get roasted every night, okay? And then guess what happens at night after the beans are roasted? They just sit there. In fact, maybe they sit there for eight hours. Because it's an overnight job. Okay, that's your, that's your waiting time. Then grinding the beans. <clears throat> Let's say these beans get ground and then they just sit there before anybody does anything with them. And that's a 30 minute thing. Let's say the coffee gets brewed and it takes about two minutes to get to the customer. Okay. So the customer's waiting for two minutes after it's brewed before we can actually give it to the customer. So what we're going to do is we're going to add everything on the bottom here and everything on the top. So value added time is one, two, three, four hours. And non-value added time is eight, eight and a half, eight hours, 32 minutes. Okay? So that tells me in this process, I spend a lot more time waiting around than I do actually doing anything that is of a value, a value added to the customer. Okay? Now, what you're going to do here is you're going to start with the customer and indicate that the customer places an order. Okay? Okay, that, all, that's all that arrow means. Okay, I place the order in the store. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So it places the order in the store. I've got that arrow down there. Okay. All this process goes through. What we're going to do is going to do an arrow all the way back. We're going to say hands to customer. Okay. Maybe there's some supervising going on. We've got the manager. What's the manager going to do? Every time you see a thing that looks like a lightning bolt that indicates some form of checking up or communication. So maybe they yell about roasting the beans. Okay? If I draw the little glasses, that means they're checking to make sure those beans have been ground. Okay? Probably going to do the little visual check on the coffee. And maybe they give it to the customer themselves. Put hand off. Okay. Now, what do you do with this value stream map? Okay. You communicate this to maybe a venture capitalist or a business owner. You're trying to communicate that there's something that you need help with. Okay. Well, let's think about what you might do first. Hmm. This is a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, this is a toughie. Where might you focus your efforts? Well, maybe say, I think this error rate of 25% is killing us. Because we brew the coffee incorrectly each time, therefore, all this other work is wasted. So, from you, Mr. or Mrs. Venture Capitalist, or bank loan, or whatever, I think I either need to buy a brewing machine that makes it easier to operate so our baristas don't make, as many don't make too many mistakes, um, maybe we need more money for training so our baristas don't make any mistakes. We need to spend our money first here to try to get this error rate as close to zero as we can. Okay. Once you get that done, you look and you say, well, look at my error rate for, I'm good with grinding beans, we're fine there, but my error rate for roasting beans is 5%, error rate to the customer is also 5%. Huh. Well, you know what? Maybe mathematically it's not really possible to get those beans 100% roasted correctly because maybe it comes in bad from the supplier. Who knows? Maybe it's just not possible for some reason. But I bet you with a little extra training, we get that down to 0%. Maybe you need some money for that. Okay, great. Now, the next thing you got to look at, what's the slowest thing going on in your process? It's definitely this roasting beans to grinding beans. Right? It takes two hours to roast those beans. Okay? So if you run out of beans, you've got to wait a full two hours. Okay? That could be a problem. And even worse is you've got to be roasting those things all night and then they just sit there. Maybe that's not fresh. So maybe you say, you know what, I need a second roaster. Okay? So that in one hour, 
So my PT goes down to one hour because I'm I got two machines operating simultaneously, and I can get that volume to one. And therefore, maybe I can reduce this time to four hours because I'm also roasting beans during the day. Okay. And maybe you just keep expanding here. Or maybe you say, you know what? Uh, I'm really not happy with the fact that the grinder is so slow. I need some more money for another grinder. Right? And so maybe you decide that you're going to get, oh, three more grinders. So the volume turns into 12. And this turns into five minutes. Now your process is starting to look balanced because every time, now as soon as you get that stuff out of the roaster, all this stuff moves at relatively the same pace. Maybe from the grinding to the brewing, you optimize this process to get this as close to zero as possible. And you don't like that two minutes thing, by the way, because the coffee gets cold and you try to focus on getting this as close to zero as possible. And then you go back again and look at your roasting. So that's kind of how you would reason through this. I hope this example is helpful. If you like it, make sure you give me a thumbs up that's like a like, subscribe down below, excuse me, give me a thumbs up that's like a like, comment below, and make sure you subscribe. Awesome. I'll see you in the next video, and we're going to look at a university. Cool.